Patch notes. Destiny 2 update 7.1.0 season of the deep. Guys, I'm going to move myself down real quick so y'all can see. Activities. Crucible Supremacy has been added to the Relentless Rotation. Supremacy will go live in four in week four of Season of the Deep. Supremacy uses standard connection-based matchmaking and does not provide enhanced super regeneration on Chris Pickup. Go wild. Don't be scared. I would say Supremacy was received pretty well, primarily because of connection-based matchmaking, but it was received really well. And of course, in, in Guardian games, you had the classes versus class, which was awesome. Lord Shax has a special treat for any Guardians who have completed their competitive division placement matches and are Silver 3 or above. Oh, okay. And the Season 20 Ascendant Emblem is no longer available to purchase and has been replaced by a new Season 21 Ascendant Emblem. I'm curious to know what this is, what this special treat is. Oh, it's a Transman effect? All right, Trials of Osiris. The game mode for Trials of Osiris is moving from Elimination to Dominion. The intro quest has been updated to better serve as an onboarding path to Trials, and it now offers new players reward for completing it. The Flawless Pool will no longer activate on Sunday, and the Challenger and Practice Soft Pools will be active all weekend. Soft means that matchmaking initially prefers not to blend the pools, but will, if necessary, to find a good game quickly. Now, if you're on your first game of the week or playing on a card with a loss recording on it, you'll be placed in a practice pool. The practice pool utilizes weekly performance and connection-based matchmaking. Now, if you're playing on a flawless card or playing with someone on a flawless card, you will be placed in the challenger pool. The challenger pool utilizes only connection-based matchmaking. Matchmaking no longer filters by wins on a card. Keep in mind, guys, we are going straight into just connection-based matchmaking for trials. Now, an issue has been corrected that was causing lobby balancing to exist in solo and duo trials matches. All players in the challenger pool will have their skill overridden with the same value to effectively randomize the lobbies. Okay. All right. Uh, now, going flawless for the first time in a season will now award a seasonal flawless shader for use, for use on any piece of gear. The Passage of Mercy will now forgive two losses if you have not yet been flawless for the week. And after you've gone flawless, the Passage of Mercy will revert to forgiving a single loss for subsequent attempts. So again, just for the initial flawless, guys. Passage of Wealth now grants bonus trials reputation on all wins. The bonus amount increases in proportion to your major trials rank. Now, after going flawless for the week, any win on a 7-win card, regardless whether the card is flawless or not, will have a chance to drop the weekly adept weapon. This bonus reward was previously exclusive to the flawless pool starting on Sunday, but will now be active all weekend and does not require you to be in a specific pool. The chance of getting an adept from a win has been slightly reduced, though, to account for the increased duration and availability of the bonus. I wonder how often that rate's going to be then. The Guild of Flawless requirements have been updated, and the new emblem has been added, which is rewarded for going flawless without ever trailing in any wins on any card. That's going to be a very, I'm assuming, a, a, a very coveted emblem. It's going to be hard, honestly. You, you can never trail on a single card. You're going to have to just completely pop off. All right. Neomuna Free Roam. Upgraded super ability kills patrols to a gold patrol to better reward players. Fix an issue where some strand kills were not counting towards patrol progress. All right. Raids. Last Wish, Deepstone Crypt, Vow of the Disciple, Vault of Glass, and King's Fall have all had their exotic drop chance boosters added to several existing triumphs. Completing these triumphs gives increased chances of initial drops of the exotic when killing the final boss of the raid. Fix an issue where players would sometimes crash during the final encounter against Oryx and King's Fall. Fix an issue where players would be able to kill Nezarak and Root of Nightmares during the last stand during his last stand wipe animation. Wow, okay. Fix an issue where players navigating with strand grapple would sometimes soft lock the traversal to the ma macro macrocosm encounter in Root of Nightmares. Adjusted tracking for properties of some projectile attacks from Nezrak and Root of Nightmares. So a developer's note here. Some projectiles were traveling higher than intended. That would make it difficult for players to see on their screen. We made them travel slightly more horizontal for better predictability. Again, Bungie doesn't like you to look up. Fix an issue. Were players progressing backwards in Route of Nightmares to the hidden chest location in Decision Encounter? Space would see Cavum of Nezarak in a T-pose and be unable to defeat it. Wow. Okay. Fix an issue where some VFX was not presented while completing nodes and traversals between encounters in Route of Nightmares. Now, Dungeons. Fix an issue where the Needle Storm would push 
Akalos inspired the Watcher away from the playable space, fixing an issue where players that cast Will of Radiance would do more than intended damage against Percy's Inspire of the Watcher, fixing an issue where the Rally Banner would sometimes remain active after starting Akalos or Akalos the Sirens encounter Inspire of the Watcher. I don't know how to say any of these guys' names. Fix an issue where Percy's in the Spire of the Watcher would be, could be indefinitely staggered with some weapons. No! Okay. I mean, I've got my solo done, so it's all good. Honestly, guys, Leviathan's Breath was so good because you could literally just stagger him over and over again. Yeah, so solo in this dungeon is going to be slightly harder. I'm just saying. Uh, fix an issue where the player that casts Will of Radiance would do more than attendant damage against Percy's Inspire of the Watcher. Developers notes reduce from two times damage and GT to 1.5 damage if you were the caster of Will of Radiance. Wyverns typically receive more damage from supers by design, but it's not desired to have as high of a damage intake for bosses. Okay. All right. Fix an unintended interaction between Sandbox abilities and the Vita Combatant's bodies that would cause Percy's Inspire of the Watcher to be deleted. Fix a rare issue where players would not be able to farm Artifice Armor and Master Difficults of Grass of Avarice while it's active in the Rotator. Okay. Fix an issue where the Spire of the Watcher emblems appeared in the Raid Collection category instead of the Rural Collection category. And all Dungeon Triumphs for Solo Flawless and Solo Flawless descriptions are updated to explicitly mention it must be done without leaving the activity in order for it to count. Okay, now UI and UX. The inspection screen and the Eververse preview screens have been updated with several enhancements. Weapons and weapon ornaments can be rotated while in the inspection screen. That is huge. And the Eververse preview screen. Thumbnails are going to be so much easier now. Uh, weapons that have ambient VFX will now display within the inspection screen and Eververse preview screen. Ships can now be rotated while in the inspection screen and the Eververse preview screen. Ship engine controls can now be previewed in the same way Sparrows can and remove the depth of field blur from all inspection screens. And that players will now have the option to swap their confirm and cancel buttons in the setting button layout input screens or subscreen. The journey page has been updated to include a new way for memorization for, for previously obtained uh, Guardian ranks, commendation score total, and season pass ranks. Fix an issue in which the active triumph score did not fit in one line in the triumph space. Fix an issue in which those held dear emblems was not displaying correctly upon hovering. Added a visual indicator that displays on top of the title seal and triumphs when there are unclaimed objectives. Tweaked a visual adjustment. All right, so a lot of just UI changes. I'm not going to get into all this. Hold on. Hold on. Unless something just jumps out to me right now, guys. Fix added an icon to the director to indicate what planet the active legend and master lost sector is. Wow. Okay, that's actually nice. Gameplay and investment. Here we go. Armor. Exotic armor tuning. Hunter. Sealed Homecarn's Grass now reloads the magazine of all your weapons when you defeat a target with your powered melee. And for five seconds after dealing melee damage, you gain increased movement speed and jump height. Arthur's Embrace. Gain additional strength while the weighted knife damage bonus is active. Oathkeeper. When fully drawn, bows gain bonus to damage against combatants that increases as you hold the draw, but deactivates after a few seconds. It's going to be so good, guys. I, I We got to see what the bonus damage is, but it's looking juice, dude. Roger's Harness. When deactivating your Arc Staff Super, you create a blinding explosion that temporarily increases your Arc Weapon damage. Super Energy refunded upon deactivation was increased. However, blocking with Ruined Guard will, now, will no longer consume energy more slowly, and the Super Drain's 30% slower, down from 50%. So it won't be able to last nearly as long. But the super energy refunded upon the activation was increased. There actually may be a play, guys, before you go into encounters. And depending how long that buff actually lasts, you just want to pop your super deactivate. And, you know, you imagine something like this paired with, like, Anarchy. You know what I mean? Uh, Radiant Dance Machines. Kills while your free dodge is active. Extends the duration of free dodging. No longer deactivates when you get too far away from enemies. Deactivates after using Suspending Slam. Stompies. Remove airborne effectiveness penalties. You only gain the increase in speed, slide distance, and improved jumping while your dodge energy is full. I know everybody is upset about this. It To me, it's better than minus 50 AE. You know what I mean? Mask and Brackers. Change to use the Tier 4 non-stacking weapon damage bonus. Increase damage bonus in PvE from 10% to 25% and granting a 6% bonus to weapon damage in PvP. All right. Time. Point contact can embrace. This is going to be a huge buff, by the way. Lightning strikes now jolt targets. Increase PvE damage per lightning bolt 
from 50 to 200. Being amplified now increases the damage of the lightning strikes by 50% instead of extending their range. No backup plans. Provides a moderate benefit to the airborne effectiveness and reload speed of shotguns. While you have a void overshield, shotguns deal additional damage and shotgun final blows refresh your overshield. While using a void subclass, rapid shotgun final blows or defeating a powerful enemy with a shotgun grants you a void overshield and kicks off your health regeneration. Listen, guys, both of those exotics are about to be so good at PvE and for PvP, but no backup plans on both ends of the spectrum are going to be very, very good. Now, second chance. Shield throw melee now weakens enemies and stunning a barrier champion with your shield throwing. Shield throw melee grants a single full melee charge. Don't know if there's going to be a cooldown there, but yes, it'll, it'll essentially just give it right back. Stronghold. Replace the healing from blocking shots precisely with a significant damage reduction. 50% in PvE, 10% in PvP while blocking with a sword. Now, when you stop blocking, you gain restoration times two. The duration that increases based on the number of shots that you've blocked. Number of shot. Okay, so I guess a number of stomp. I mean, a stomp is a. I guess that's a singular shot. Um, I kind of wish that was just tied to damage, but I want a bunch of can't do that. Eternal Warrior. Rapid takedowns with an arc weapon grants an escalating bonus to arc weapon damage using the same non stacking damage bonus used by search mods. This can go all the way up to tier 4 damage bonus, granting a damage bonus in PvE of 25% and granting a 6% bonus to weapon damage in PvP. While at the tier 4 damage bonus, Arc Kills refreshes the bonus's duration. After your Fist of Havoc Super ends, you gain the tier 4 damage bonus. Now, Kepri Sorn, the solar damage wave now scorches targets. Path the Burning Steps, change the use of the non stacking weapon damage bonus used by search mods. This can go all the way up to tier 4, again, 25% bonus here, 6% inside of PvP. And again, while at the tier 4 damage bonus, solar kills refreshes the bonus's duration. Becoming in case immediately grants you that tier 4 damage bonus. Now, Dune Marchers reduce the range of the chain damage from 20 meters to now 12 meters and PvP damage from 85 to now 50. Should be much less lightning, guys. But what makes me mad about Dune Marchers is when someone melees a target and then they run, like, then you walk into the room. The target has already been killed and then the arc damage erupts out of nowhere and, and kills you. Right. Or the chain damage erupts out of somewhere and just, just kills you. So uh, hopefully that's going to correct that. Warlock Vesper Radius. Your rifts emit an arc shockwave every five seconds and deals 200 in PvE and 70 damage in PvP. Enemies defeated by these shockwaves explode for an additional 100 damage. Now, if you have an arc subclass equipped, the shockwaves and the explosions created when they defeat an enemy also blinds nearby enemies. Now, Chromatic Fire. Increases, increase the radius and damage of the explosion created by the previous kinetic takedown. The explosion also applies the status effect to the targets damaged by it, depending on which subclass you've equipped. Blind for arc, scorched for solar, slow for stasis, sever for strand, and weaken for void. No lie, chromatic is looking juice, fellas. Don Chorus, daybreak projectiles deal increased damage. Daybreak damage bonus no longer limited to scorched enemies. Very nice. Sanguine Alchemy. Standing in a rift grants a non-stacking bonus to weapon damage, matching your subclass damage type. 17% in PvE, 5% in PvP, or 4.5% in PvP. Uh, Claws of Amkara. Power melee kills create an orb of power. When heavy-handed mods are equipped, this increases the potency of the orb, so it makes it a thicker orb. No more than one orb can be spawned per enemy takedown. Now, Man on Battle Harmony. Change the damage bonus to weapons when super is full will change to tier 4 non-stacking weapon damage bonus, increase damage bonus in PvE from 20% to now 25%, and reduce the damage bonus from 15% to 6% in PvP. The damage bonus only applies to weapons that match your subclass damage time and now stacks with empowering rift and other similar damage bonuses. Extended base duration of this bonus from 6 seconds to now 10 seconds in PvE and 3 seconds to 5 seconds in PvP. Affinian Aspects, remove the extended melee range. Yes! Promethean Spur grants Rift Energy for any solo weapon takedown with more energy granted for solo weapon takedowns while standing in a Rift. You now have to be standing in a Rift when you get a final blow for the exotic to consume your class ability energy and create a Rift at a target's location. Starfire Protocol, reduce the amount of energy gained per instance of damage from 20% to now 2.5%. And power weapon kills now grant 20% grenade energy. But you can get an ornament for it. You saw that ornament? Yeah. Looking it's spice. so clean. Too bad the exotic is shit. 
<laughs> General, fix an issue causing Gurf Falcon's Harbor to immediately deploy the granted reserve overshield. The player finish an enemy while having less than 10% class ability energy. Fix an issue with the ball endorsed Wrath Reavers that caused them to grant bonus weapon damage to non stasis weapons. Speed Loader Slacks buff now has a unique text when displayed in the HUD. Fix an issue causes severance and closure to not function on strand subclasses. Fix an issue where using the exotic armor Abbey and Leap would cause the aspect Dreamer's Lash to not gain increased suspend duration from the fragment Thread of Continuity. Wow. So that's going to get even better now. Fix an issue with Swarmers that cause Threadlings created from Tangos to trigger the fragment Thread of Fury. Oh, okay. Fix an issue where Verity Sprout would grant bonus grenade energy to allies for longer than intended but not for the individual user itself. A lot of people are saying Verity's Brow is essentially going to replace Starfire. Updated the sign Ramparts uh, perk description string to better reflect its behavior. All right, so armor mods. Added two new armor mods. Powerful attraction. When using your class ability, you collect all orbs of power within a radius determined by the number of copies of the mod that you have equipped. Elemental charges. Collecting the subclass collectible associated with your damage type. Fire sprites, Ionic Traces, Stasis Shards, Void Breaches has an escalating chance to grant you a stack of armor charge. On Strand, this is granted by destroying Tangles. Now, fix an issue causing the melee kickstart mod to consume armor charges when the, when the player use an unpowered melee attack. Targeting, Dexterity, Loader, Reserve, Unflinching Search, and Holster mods now work correctly when a weapon changes damage type. Fix an issue causing the armor mod distribution to grant super energy. Fix an issue where ammo finder mods could trigger on non-weapon kills. Multiple copies of the Reaper mod no longer provide any additional bit of it. And Snaring Slam now counts as a class ability for relevant armor mods. Fix an issue causing three resistance mods to not provide any additional benefit compared to two. Fix an issue causing sword attacks with no ammo to trigger the heavy enemy mod. Why? Wow, I didn't even know that. Fix an issue causing the dynamo mod to extend active supers when a class ability was here. What? The harmonic resistance now displays its message while used on a strand subclass, indicating that it provides no benefit. I'm miscellaneous changes here. Fix an issue causing artifice armor from Spire of the Watcher and the Warlock Deep Explorer boots to, to not be able to be made into armor ornaments. Fix our players can no longer reacquire the season 17 or 18 artifacts from collections. All right, weapons global. A full auto melee setting is now available. Weapon reticles, a setting that changed the reticle color when it is over an enemy target is now available players can now change their hip fire reticle color both in its normal state and in its state where it is above an enemy weapon crafting craft crafted and enhanced weapons using special ammo now makes slightly faster weapon progress for kills good weapon crafting components no longer require legendary shards this change is excluded from weapon enhancing which still requires legendary shards at enhancement tier one last wish weapons can now be crafted each week, players can visit Hawthorne in the tower to acquire Pursuit to complete all encounters of the Last Wish raid. Completion will award guaranteed Last Wish pattern progress until all patterns are acquired. In addition, completion of the Pursuit will unlock a vendor exchange on Hawthorne for that week where players can spend spools of conquest to purchase one additional deep side weapon from a selection of Last Wish weapons they previously obtained. Oh my god. Oh my, Les, what weapon are you looking for the most to crafting from Last Wish? Never mind, chat. Les died. Players can now obtain a limited number of deep sight harmonizers from the season pass. On a weapon with an available pattern that has never had deep sight, a player can apply this currency to immediately give the weapon deep sight for pattern extraction through deep sight activation. Weapons will have an information section display if a weapon is available for deep sight activation. Again, guys, think of this more as a, as a catch-up mechanic. Uh, fix an issue. We're crafted bows. We're not getting their stats upgraded when reaching level 20. The Marcelion C Heavy Grenade Launcher Pattern Triumph has been removed as this weapon cannot be shaped nor enhanced. Well, shit, chat. We've been baited all season long. Fix an issue where memento trackers were not working on Imperial Decree, Gold Tusk, Throne Cleaver, and Death's Razors. Fix an issue prevented crafting menagerie weapons from memento trackers from tracking progress. Now, weapon archetypes. Updated tier 4 or updated tier 10 masterwork stats provided on adept weapons. So bows, glaze, and fusion rifles properly inherit the plus 3 to all stats, and they can roll as masterwork option. Uh, fix an issue where adept mods could be inserted into non-adept weapons. Non-adept weapons with an adept mod inserted will have the perk deactivated. 
Shotguns. Fixing issue causing shotgun reticles to be visible in some circumstances. They shouldn't. Shotgun reticles should no longer be visible while sprinting and in a finisher emoting and other third person actions. Fixing issue with a brief. By the way, shotgun reticles no longer visible while sprinting. That's okay. All right. Fixing issue with a brief rate of fire increases on aggressive shotguns after getting a kill could be sustained after swapping off the shotgun immediately after a kill. Okay. Now, sniper rifles increase PV damage by 10%. Izanagi's Burden's Hone Edge perk does not count. You know, somebody brought up Cross. It doesn't mean Izanagi's not getting the buff. You're right. It's still getting the buff. But who the hell uses Izanagi's Burden without proccing Hone Edge? Now, Scout Rifles. Fix an issue. With a long arm, Scout Rifles getting the PV damage bonus for exotics. Grenade Launchers. Fix an issue. Where some grenade launcher explosions were missing their proper visual effects. Fix an issue. Where Amalan heavy grenade launchers would not benefit from the recent buff to the projectile collision radius. They are now they are now consistent with other heavy grenade launchers. Now, submachine guns. Aggressive submachine guns reduce base damage from 15 to now 14. Increase precision hit multiplier from 1.45 to 1.5. Crit damage is now dropping from 21.8 to 21. Also, the Immortal individually is getting its base range value reduced by 10. We'll see how that plays out. Still has target lock. And, and, and still very high range. Bows, fix an issue. Where the Arsenic by Bow would display an incorrect charge time on its tooltip. All right. Updated stats on the Tyranny of Heaven Bow to better compete with the current selection of lightweight bows. Miscellaneous and visuals fix an issue where the glow when firing on the Nessus Obligation Legendary Shotgun was not as bright as intended. Fix an issue where the Nass Redden and Caretaker Legendary Swords would not display their proper stats. Fix an issue where the Muzzle Flash on the State Frosty Pulse Rifle was brighter. Brighter than intended. Okay. All right. Exotic Weapons. Eyes of Tomorrow. Kills, killing four targets with a Missile Volley will now refund one ammo. That is a huge change. Graviton Lance. Increase RPM from 257 to 300. Reduce burst delay by 20%. Now matches revision zeros, hockey heavy round. It's essentially the same two round burst. They also rebalance the damage per shot. Essentially, just kind of, it's not exactly 50 50, but it's like, you know, what is that? 40, 40, 60, right? J Rabbit added a buff text to show when Fate of All Fool increases body shot damage is active. Quickly hitting three critical hits now refunds three shots instead of just one. The Mana Core increased the catalyst damage resistance from tier three to tier four. Increase movement speed during hang time and activating the catalyst perk through an airborne kill or sustained damage following an airborne kill. Now partial refills the magazine. Fix an issue of allowing players to hover around with mana core while frozen or suspended. Becoming frozen or suspended now ends the mana core's hover effect. Now Lumina. Increase number rounds cap from 5 to 6 to account for the catalyst granting two number round remnants per kill. That's good. Hard Shadow. Damage increase increase now activates quicker while invisible after 0.25 seconds instead of just one second heart shadow now weakens targets upon dealing any damage while the damage increase is active again no one's really jumping up saying we're in a heart shadow meta but once once we're in a situation where swords get their buffed and their rework it, it should be cooking by the way let's let me know when the updates live for you <sighs> yeah sweet business now fires explosive rounds every 20 shots fewer shots while fully spun them and keep in mind it's going to be it's not just going to be one explosive round. It's supposed to be like a, a super shot in some ways, at least my understanding. Uh, Legend of Accuracy increased total ammo from 12 to 16. Increased maximum projectile distance from 9 meters to 12 meters. Tommy's matchbook. This is going to be a huge change. This is what we're using today. Catalyst update. While overheated, every five shots applies 14 plus 7 with Embers of Ashes fragments scorch stacks. Dude, guys. The ignitions gonna be insane no time to explain updated drone to work with anti-barrier uh updated drone to work with feeding frenzy and this also resolved an issue where the audio cue and screen feedback for feeding frenzy would always play when the players spawn regardless of a perk state and then wouldn't play on perk activation sky burners oath increased scorch stacks from three to five and five to ten with ember of ember of ashes fragment salvation script reworked to have two firing modes charge shot creates a pattern of stasis crystals where the number of crystals is no longer dependent on charge shot. Uncharged shot is a normal grenade launcher shot, but does more damage to stasis crystals and frozen targets. New perk added that reloads the magazine from reserves when you quickly shatter at least three crystals with the uncharged shot. Bad juju, fix an issue that was causing the weapon to recoil like an auto rifle, making it harder to control. The recoil pattern will now be similar to other pulse rifles. 
Uh, fighting Lion, by the way, th this could be a major change for Bad Juju. Fighting Lion, fix an issue. That was causing this weapon to do more damage than intended to Red Bar Combatants. Whisper the Worm. Whisper the Worm now has a unique head-up display icon in the weapon tray, similar to other exotics. World Line Zero. World Line Zero's sprinting teleport slash now costs 50% energy, down from 100%, and can be chained into itself when used on the ground. Damage from an individual heavy attack was increased by 8.3%. Winter Bite. The impact damage has been removed and redistributed to the detonation damage. This addresses issues where Winter Bite's primary projectile could sometimes multiply, multiply hit a single target depending on performance and network conditions. The self-damage scaling has been tuned to account for that increased damage of detonation. This is an issue that causes Winter Bite's melee to mistakenly count as an energy weapon slot kill for the purposes of progression. So the leveling glitch that we were doing with Winter Bite you can't do that anymore. And secondly, they're saying that they fixed the issue where essentially bosses' health pools would just disappear uh, when shooting with Winter Bite. Where's the update? I don't know. Vexcalibur. Vexcalibur's upgraded. Intrinsic traits at the crafting table now provide slight stat increases. Good. Verglass Curve. Fixed an issue causing Verglass Curve Stasis Crystals to fail to spawn if shot at a Titan Bubble. Wow. Okay. Tractor Cannon. Fixed an issue where Tractor Cannon was impacted by the recent non-lethal collision damage changes. Now causes his targets to be able to suffer lethal collision damage for a brief duration. All right. It's back. Thunderlord. Fixed an issue where the Thunderlord was dam where damaging a target under the effects of Divinity's debuff caused lightning strikes with unintentional frequency as the hit would count as two precision hits instead of one. Miscellaneous and visual. Uh, exotics with lock-on reticles like Tiku's Divination, Final Warning, and Eyes of Tomorrow should no longer auto-target allied tangos and grapple points. Well, I didn't even know it was doing that. Fix an issue that was causing the special first-person recoil animation across the 77k special shot to, to, to play incorrectly. This is an animation-only change. Symmetry's visual effects are no longer persistent on screen if you switch weapons while the special fire mode is active. Fix an issue on Sleeper Simulant's weapon model that was causing the display screen to be an incorrect color. Fix an issue where the higher needs had its catalyst located under the kinetic weapons on the Triumph screen. Revision Zero now has its high zoom scope flip up slightly earlier when special reloading. And Revision Zero had its UI buff progress bar adjusted to turn more opaque when the weapon is full on targeting data, similar to how other exotic UI bars work. I would just like it if Revision Zero could just get targeting data faster, right? Uh, weapon perks, fragile focus, bonus now lasts until shield is depleted. Bonus now returns when shield regenerates to 100%. Shoot to loot, the shoot to loot perk can be now be used to collect ores of power in addition to ammo boxes. Reconstruction, rebuild to allow it to put be put on more weapons without exceeding perk budgets. So essentially what they did with this guy is they consolidated the time here. Base perk um, essentially being the same whether it's it's reloading or, or overloading the weapon four seconds for base 3.5 seconds for enhanced verbal weapon fix an issue where the perk would override certain damage types breaking functionality and some damage over time effects now provides effects even when the weapon is stowed for example a rocket shot from a rocket launcher with verbal weapon will retain the damage increase against bosses even if you swap to another weapon okay so the main takeaway for this guys the infinite damage over time effects that verbal was causing with osseo strigger should not work we'll let you know if it actually does though but well, i i'm skeptical subsistence fix an issue where the effects of the subsistence perk cause reservoir bursts to fail to activate under certain networking conditions all right adagio no longer resets by destroying stasis crystals valiant charge no longer activates when when taking environmental hazard damage encore fix an issue where the enhanced version of this perk status would appear on the buff tray screen twice thresh demolitionist and pugilist now provides additional energy on glaive kills on on par or I guess that's supposed to be on par with sniper rifles, shotguns, and fusion rifles. Now, weapon traits, two excess, which is on things like all stringer. Fix an issue where the timer for this origin trait was not showing. Had an issue suppressing its countdown timer address, and the countdown timer is now visible in the trait. Now, brain inheritance. Fix an issue where this origin trait would activate on time barricades, stasis crystals, and other destructible objects. Right, now we're getting into abilities arc subclass arc strider arc staff increased damage versus pv combatants by 20 percent gathering storm increased direct impact damage versus players from 200 to 300 increased secondary lightning strike maximum damage versus players from 300 to 500 increased lingering lightning tick damage versus players from 40 to 60 
now deals increased damage to Weller Rainings and Ward of Dawn, fixing an issue causing super energy to be caused to be costed before the staff projectile was created, specifically in cases where the casting player was killed or was suppressed, frozen, or suspended during a specific 0.07 second window during the cast, cast performance. The staff projectile now embeds into the following combatant types regardless of the target tier, ra rather than over penetrating. Hive and taking overs, scoring abominations, vex wyverns, fallen bricks. All right. Strike, offensive havoc, reduced light attack energy cost from 8.5% to 6%, reduced heavy attack energy cost from 18% to 12%, increased heavy slam damage by 33% versus PvE enemies. Should be nice, guys. Should be nice. Is it meta? Probably not. Probably not. Knockout. Reduce lunge range while active from 6.5 meters to 5.5 meters. Increase damage bonus for uncharged melees versus PvE combatants from 60% to now 100%. Juggernaut. Increase fragment slots from 1 to 2. Seismic Strike. Now costs 15% energy on activation if no target was hit. And this is across the board for all shoulder charges. They reduce base cooldown though from 101 seconds to 91 seconds. Bruster. Fix an issue where players field of view could pop if Bruster was activated while sprinting. What could pop? Could pop. Okay. Slightly increase upward acceleration on activation to reduce instances where the player could be caught on the ground. Uh, that would happen a lot, actually. All right. Storm caller. Storm trends increase PV damage against combatants by 25%. Reduce time to reach maximum damage ramp while attacking from 5 seconds to 3 seconds. That could be a huge change. Landfall detonation and seekers now jolts targets on hit. Huge, guys. Huge. Chaos reach. Increase PV versus PV and combatants. Increased damage, well, increased PV. Increased damage versus PV combats by 25%. Increased damage resistance versus players from 40% to now 50%. Increased maximum strafe speed from 3.5 meters to 4.5 meters per second. I, I don't know. I mean, I, how much are we moving with Chaos Reach? Adjusted super camera to avoid players' body blocking view of the targets. Thank God. Sustained Chaos Reach damage on a single target now creates a jolting lightning strike at the target's location. Now, Lightning Surge. Fix an issue, allowing Lightning Surge to deal more instances of secondary strike damage than intended. Hey, hey, guys. Lightning Surge should not get the one-hit KO anymore. We'll see. It's annoying. I know we've made a ton of builds. But the, the idea with Lightning Surge is you, you're, you're supposed to use it as a means of follow-up damage. And people have been using it as a primary way of just going in and, and clearing house. Now, Ball Lightning. Increased damage versus PV combatants by 30%. Reduce pink scalar on downward lightning strike detonation so combatants are less likely to flinch out of the repeated lightning strike volume while the player is amplified. Arc grenades, flux grenades, increase Amos's cone half angle from 3 degrees to 4.5 degrees. Should be easier to stick. Arc general speed booster, reduce jump acceleration bonus scalar from 1.5 to 1.25. Reduce activation timer while sprinting from 3 seconds to 2.5 seconds. Increase linger time after, after the player stops sprinting from 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds. Fix an issue where if players were already sprinting and then became amplified, speed booster would not be granted. Now, jolts. This is a nerf here. Reduce damage versus PV combatants by 15%. Reduce additional bonus damage scalar versus major combatants by 20%. And jolt damage triggers now correctly attribute ownership of the chain lining damage. Previously, this would show damage numbers for the player that applied the initial jolt debuff. Now, the player that deals damage to trigger the jolt chain lining will be the owner of that damage and will see the damage number flyouts. Good. Good. Now, solar subclasses, gunslinger, golden gun, both marksman and deadshot, increase PV and damage by 20%. Gunpowder gamble, increase fragment slots from 1 to 2, reduce cooldown from 12 seconds to now 6 seconds. Weighted throwing knife, reduce minimum projectile tracking shape size by 25% and maximum projectile tracking shape size by 10% on mouse and keyboard. Proximity Explosive Knife. Reduce detonation damage versus players from 105 to 90. Increase impact de damage versus players from 14 to 20. Again, they're wanting you to actually use it more as a means of hitting the target directly versus just laying it down as a trap. Lightweight Knife. Increase projectile speed from 30 meters per second to 40 meters per second. Increase size of the projectile tracking shape by 20%. Sunbreaker. Hammer of Soul. Increase damage versus PV combatants by 10%. Burning Maul. Increase damage versus PV combatants by 10%. Heavy Slam Cycle now applies a small amount of Scorch over time. Now creates a Sunspot on activation while the Soul Invictus aspect is equipped, matching the behavior of Hammer Soul, aka guys, Burning Maul. It's going to be able to last longer. That's that's the thing. And we saw the damage here recently. I was impressed with Burning Maul. Really, really. He was extremely impressed to see how much damage it's putting out. Actually, I think it came in second place for us 
Again, doesn't mean most DPS, just means most total damage for a super. Keep that in mind. Soul Invictus, increased sunspot damage per tick versus players from 15 to 22. Hammer Strike, now costs 15% energy on activation if no target was hit. Reduce base cooldown from 101 seconds to 91 seconds. Throwing Hammer, now adjusts its initial trajectory based on your aim assist target to increase consistency versus fast moving targets. We'll see about that. We'll see. Dawn Blade, Daybreak, adjusts the super camera to allow the player to look further down and avoid VFX blocking view of targets when moving quickly. Incinerate Snap, fix an issue preventing projectiles from proximity detonating and reduce total damage versus players from 150 to 135. This is intended primarily to offset Incinerate Snap's increased consistency following this fix. What they said, guys, Incinerate Snap is supposed to be really, really good. Uh, solar Grenade, Swarm Grenade, increase the size of the secondary projectile detonation from 1 meter to 1.4 meters to reduce the number of instances where the secondary projectiles could bounce far enough away from the track target to fail to damage or scorch them. Healing Grenade, reduce detonation screen shake feedback for allied players. This reduction is further increased for players that are aiming down sights. Now, Solar General, Scorch, increase stun time before Scorch stacks begin falling off from 1.5 seconds to 2.3 seconds versus enemy players. That is a huge, huge change there. Increase stun time before Scorch stats begin to fall off from 3 seconds to 4.5 seconds versus PvE combatants. And fix an issue where the Scorch screen VFX would immediately pop off when the player transitioned from being Scorched to Igniting. Fix an issue where damaging a Scorch target with some poison effects would forcibly remove Scorch. Ember Benevolence, increase bonus energy regeneration scalar by 100%, reduce active duration by 50%, and Crucible and Gambit, though. Okay. Void Subclasses. Night Stalker, Spectral Blades, increase damage versus PV combatants by 35%. Heavy Attack now weakens targets on hits. Fix an issue causing right hand attacks to fail to connect when attacking at fully ramped attack speed. No lie, guys. We tested the damage for Spectral Blades. It is so shine. It is arguably the worst super I have ever used in PvE. It needs all the help it can get. I'm hoping this is going to be somewhat usable. Trapper's Ambush. Increase fragment slots from 1 to 2. Snare Bomb. Increase duration of the weakened debuff on PvE combatants from 4 seconds now. 8 seconds. That's actually, that's actually very nice. Sinnoh. Sinnoh Shield. Increase damage versus PvE combatants by 20%. Increase in Super Shield Throw Ability Regeneration Rate to offset the reduction and stab based regeneration introduced with the release of life off. Bastion increased fragment slots from one to two. Because that's exactly what we needed on top of our overshields. Another fragment. Shield throw increased base impact damage from 60 to 70. Increased consistency of finding and adjusting the projectile's flight trajectory toward a new target after a bounce. It's supposed to be better. We'll see. Um, considering Shield Bash got nerfed alongside other things. Uh, and again, the same thing here with Shield Bash. 50% energy on activation, even if a target was not hit. Reduce base cooldown, though, from 114 seconds to 91 seconds. Now, Void Walker, Nova Bomb. Both Cataclysm and Vortex got a 20% buff in PvE. Nova Warp, increased damage versus PvE and combatants by 15%. And a fully charged attack now makes enemies volatile on hit. Chaos Accelerant, Fragment Slots increased from 1 to 2, which is very good. Charge Scatter Grenades. Increase tracking consisting of charged scatter grenades and some munitions. Increase some munition arming duration to improve the likelihood of some munitions reaching their target. Fix an issue where some sub munitions were impacting the ground on creation, resulting in early detonations. The story of my life when I use these. Uh, charged magnetic grenades, the handle supernova. Increase hold time for charged magnetic grenades from 3.2 seconds to 4.5 seconds. I don't really know why. All right, void grenades, void spike, reduce damage per tick. Versus enemy players from 28 to 23, unchanged versus PvE commands. Really? We have a voice spike nerf in PvP? Why? Void, void General, volatile, now displays a timer in the player HUD when they are volatile. Reduced durations versus players from 10 seconds to 6 seconds. Echo of Harvest no longer requires a precision kill to activate. Stasis subclass, Revenant, Shatter Dive, increased fragment slots from 1 to 2, Withering Blade, increased maximum projectile tracking strength by 12.5%, increased projectile tracking search range on balance versus players by 20%, fixed issue where boss combat and auto shatters when frozen by Withering Blade were dealing significantly more damage than auto shatters from freeze applied by any other stasis melee ability. Behemoth, Glacial Quake. Increase Shiver Strike Thrust while Glacial Quake is active by 10%. Also increase the Light Attack damage by 20% against all target types. We're going to have to show y'all some crazy stuff, guys. Behemoth 
has got some nutty damage. Not even in his heavy attack form. We, we, we still haven't even shown its full potential. Howl of the Storm increased width of the Freezing Cone versus players by 31%. You guys are going to love that. I'm, look, Howl of the Storm is going to be good. What, watch what I say. I, even inside of PvP, uh, it's already good inside of PvE because you can actually stack the damage with the super and this crazy amounts of damage. But it's going to be um, it's going to be annoying inside of PvP. Shiver Strike. Increased maximum thrust while in flight by 16%. Decreased maximum downward influence of gravity while in flight by 18%. Now, Shade Binder. Winter's Wrath. Increased damage versus PvE combats by 10%. Really going to be nice with ball of doors. Frost Post. Now grants 2.5 meters of additional melee target search and lunge range for 1.2 seconds on Rift Activation. Which just means free kills. That's nice. I love getting killed out of my bubble. From a Frost Pulse Warlock. Stasis Grenades. Dustfield Grenade. Fix an issue where equipping Bleak Watcher or Renewal Grass would extend Dustfield Grenades cooldown time significantly further than intended. It's cold Snap Grenades. Fix an issue where Cold Snap Grenade would not create Fall Up Seekers if the initial projectile landed too closely to the target. Fix an issue where Cold Snap Grenades would not freeze the target if the initial projectile landed directly below the target. Increase Cold Snap Grenade Seeker Detonation Size versus Players from 1.5 meters to 1.75 meters to fix an issue where the Seeker could detonate but fail to freeze the target but would then still create a follow-up Seeker. I had a lot of issues. Should be working more consistently. Stasis General. Fix an issue where the Tectonic Harvest, Grim Harvest, and Glacial Harvest aspect buff trade icons were incorrect. Strand Subclasses. Thread Runner. Silk Strike. Reduce the amount of mount the player was slowed when casting Silk Strike immediately after a grapple. Dude, it was so long. I would just get immediately messed up out of my super inside of PvP. Threaded Spike increases damage versus PvP combats by 55%. Increase the projectile travel range before beginning return to the player by 30%. Slightly reduce the speed of the dart as it returns to the player to make catching it easier. And increase energy gain for catching the dart based on the number of enemies hit. Now Pierce's Cabal Phalanx's shields no longer prioritizes the catch action over the grapple melee if an enemy target is within grapple melee range. Berserker, Blade Fury, fix an issue, allowing players to use their super infinitely in Mayhem under special conditions. Wow. Frenzy Blade, reduce cooldown based on the number of melee energy charges the player has stored. So, at zero charges, cooldown reduced by 15%, two reduced by 30%. The idea here, guys, is to hang on to your, at least one melee charge, right? Fix an issue, preventing players from using high sword attacks while they had Frenzy Blade melee charge. Drinker's last. Fix an issue resulting in Dringer Slash projectiles getting stuck and lingering in level geometry, specifically corners for extended periods of time. It's so good, though. It's so good. Brood Weaver, Needle Storm, reduce physics acceleration per projectile by 70% to reduce instances of bosses. For example, Aeglas inspired the Watcher from flying into the stratosphere when struck, when struck by every projectile once. See, this is the stuff I needed to know during my solo attempt, guys. Arcane Needle. Decrease cooldown based on how many melee charges the player has stored. So again, the same thing there with Berserker. You want to hang on to at least one charge. Increase projectile speed based on the projectile's flight time. Initial velocity increase from 40 meters per second up from 30. Final velocity increase to 70 meters per second up from 60. Increase projectile tracking strength by 10%. Fix an issue preventing Claws of Hamkara from granting a fourth melee charge to Arcane Needle. Huge. Fix an issue where players could very rapidly initiate unpowered melees back to back while jumping while Arcane Needle was equipped. Okay. Strand Grenades. Grapple. Reduce base cooldown from 105 to 82 seconds. Reduce minimum time between grapple activation from 2.5 seconds to 0.2 seconds. And fix an issue allowing players to mount sparrows while grappling. Strand General. Threat of generation. Reduce energy regeneration provided by some damage over time mechanics. Reduce energy generation provided by trace rifle damage by 36%. Uh, fix an issue that could result in players remaining in first person after picking up a new tangle quickly after throwing a tangle. Updated placement of tangle carry carry objects in the player's arm and locomotion animation sets. New strand aspects. Hunter, threaded spike. Activate your class ability to leave behind a decoy woven from strand matter that draws the attention of nearby combatants and pings the radar for other guardians. After taking significant damage or when combatants approach, the decoy detonates, dealing damage and releasing threadlings that seek out and attack nearby foes. Titan Fletched Storm. While sliding, activate your charged melee ability to leap into the air, knocking nearby targets away and dealing damage. While airborne, activate your charged melee again to launch a cluster of damaging unraveling projectiles. Repeatedly activating melees will chain additional throws. Warlock, the Wanderer, tangles, tangles you throw attached to enemies and detonate into a suspending burst. Threatening final blows create a tangle. 
Actually, out of all these guys, the, the Fletcher Storm looks juice, man. Uh, ghosts. The following ghost shells now support Trials, Flawless Glows in, in Memoriam, Horus, and Heroes Wake. Ships. The following ships. Okay, this is all just like aesthetic stuff. Let's move on to this. Power and progression. We have added exotic focusing options to Raul. Standard decryption. Any exotic animal can be decrypted into a random, previously owned armor piece for free. Current behavior. Advanced decryption. In an exotic ingram can be focused into an armor from a specific expansion for a small cost. You must have previously acquired all exotic armor for your class from an expansion to use this option. And then precision decryption. An exotic ingram can be focused into a specific piece of armor you have previously acquired for a higher cost. And notice, it does not mention here you had to you had to get all. So you can completely bypass advanced decryption and the discovery of all exotics and go straight for precision decryption if you have acquired that specific exotic. And that's my understanding of it, guys. All exotics from any source should now drop with higher average stats and more frequent spikes. Rewards for Crucible playlist challenges, weekly strike challenge, and weekly gamut challenge have been changed to a powerful, focusable exotic Ingram. Wow. The following exotic game rewards have been changed from auto decrypt to focusable. Season pass, paid, and free tracks. Wow, really? Vendor reputation tracks after the first reset and raw drops. So across the board, guys, we're going to be able to pick them up and focus them. I hope the stats are good. The stats have got to be good. Now, bounties and pursuits. A new lifefall post-campaign pursuit has been added. Visit Nimbus after completing the unfinished business exotic quest to learn more. All right. That's the is that the new quest? Am I getting that right? There's an issue where the preservation mission on the throne world wasn't appearing, blocking completion of re of report pyramid inspect region chest icons have been added to the description and objective progress text for the from zero and to hero quests. Vanguard bounties dailies, uh yeah they changed up some bounties made it easier repeatable bounties yada yada rewards uh facts and chests on EDZ and Nessus are now awarding glimmer and XP. Added Neomuna weapons as a chan as a drop change from completing heroic public events. Wow. Reduce Neomuna weapon drop chances from VIP patrols. What? Finest matter weave no longer drops in game. Whenever matter weave would have dropped in the past, one enhancement core dropped instead. Existing finer finest matter weave can be dismantled to gain one enhancement core. Rainmakers no longer drop in the game. Whenever Rainmakers would have dropped in the past, 3,000 Glimmer drops instead. Existing Rainmakers can now be dismantled for 3,000 Glimmer each. All right, Triumphs of Titles, the Conqueror Discipline Triumph now requires completing any, any Grandmaster Nightfall using Strand in addition to existing requirements. If you previously claimed this Triumph, it will remain claimed. If you previously claimed the Conqueror Seal, that will remain claimed as well. Guardian Ranks, when starting a new season, which is today, or if you're a returning veteran player who has never played around with Guardian Ranks, you now are reset to Guardian Rank 5. All seasonal all seasonal blue Guardian Rank objectives are now re are reset and must be completed again to get your Guardian Rank back. Guardian displayed their previous rank for the entire following season. Guardian displayed their previous rank for the entire following season. I repeat, Guardians displayed their previous rank for the entire following season. Quiet fives! The 11s are talking. We have taken a pass at placement of all Guardian rank objectives to make for a more intuitive experience. All right, nice. Combinations added the best dress combination card to the Ironwood Tree in the tower. Fixed an issue in which combinations objectives and Guardian ranks were displaying the incorrect combination icon. Fixed an issue in which the text container for combinations for some non-match made higher difficulty activities were not the correct size. All right, a lot of other general fixes. A 3D audio fix. We'll see if that actually did anything. Audio's been really funky here lately. Uh, seasonal armor ornament name corrections. Rallying. Fix some of those issues. Uh, fix an issue with the Spire of the Watcher boss. Could be deleted from the game when players use the Gathering Storm Super or Storm Grenades under specific circumstances. Okay. Eververse new feature. Eververse will now provide players with personalized recommendations. I love it. The Good Boy Protocol Stat Tracker has been re-enabled with all Season 19 progress intact and moved from the seasonal category to account lifetime. I'm back in the tower. Artifact perks can now be individually refundable by clicking on an active perk. Some localization changes. German Saint 14 has been permanently recast. Fix an issue which the Korean rating icons were displayed incorrectly in the control of the menu settings. Fix an issue which the title screen for Destiny 2 Life was displayed 
game title with a slight overlap. Guys, that is your patch notes. Patch notes. Editors, Luke! Cut thy patch notes! Slap that like button like your mama told you right. <laughs>